Hello, fellow human beings. Pam the Wooly Dragon. Is that like Puff the Magic Dragon? No. I'm not as cool. So here, I kind of grabbed my camera a little bit late, so I just wanted to intro this. So I have been trying over the years to do softwood, hardwood cuttings and somehow keep not happening. Uh, I combination of not having the right materials, right techniques obviously, timing, timing is everything. So uh, I'm gonna give it a try. And uh, I kind of got started, I, I grabbed my camera a little bit late so I'm playing catch up here but I'll show you what I've done so far and then we'll continue on. So say everyone say hi to Lola. Lola is my 2003 Saturn View who is very dependable, but boy, she's getting old, just like her mama. Anyway, it's a cloudy day. You can see a little bit of blue sky through this, but there's like a 50-50 chance of getting rain showers today. Had a little bit go through earlier, but not enough to water. So I'm like, if I water out in the garden, it'll rain. If I don't water out in the garden, it won't rain. Murphy's Law, always in vogue in anything I do these days. Uh, so kind of give you an update of what I'm doing. Uh, decided I want to do some grafting and watching other fellow YouTubers and trying to get better with my techniques. So I went over to my parents house yesterday. They live about 10 miles away and I had, well, we had, I had kind of sort of taken it over at some point. Uh, the garden it's a fairly big garden but they have the one benefit is the fact that they've been there for like 40 years now and piling up you know compost with goat droppings and horse droppings and when we had it pig and cow droppings all over the place composted it in you know tilled it in that kind of stuff uh yes for you purists who don't like doing the tilling you know this was 30 40 years ago before we knew this was bad so but anyway, uh, so they have much better soil than I do. So I have a lot of stuff over there that, you know, again, they're only 10 miles away, but they're 10 miles away. And, you know, to get my lazy old butt up and get into Lola. Hi, Lola. Uh, it's sometimes more effort than it should be. And it really shouldn't be. So hopefully I can start getting a little bit more oomph. So what I did yesterday, they have... Uh, plants all over the place. Uh, they have grapes, they have figs, they have blueberries, grapes, I already said that, um, plums, a couple apple trees, a couple pear trees. Um, what else? I think that's about it, but if I uncover it, I'll let you know. Um, so, and I'm, I took the cuttings, brought them over, got home kind of late last night, so I just put them in that five gallon bucket with some water in it so they wouldn't dry out. They seem to be okay, and the fact that it's not very bright and sunny out here, I think is to my favor, but I'm gonna try and get into this. So what I've done so far is I've grabbed the blueberry cuttings and I had one teeny tiny, the one in the center there, that is a seedless Concord grape cutting and then a couple of cuttings off of their fig tree. I'm going to try and do fig cuttings after everything's gone dormant like you're supposed to, but I thought I'd give it a try. I've seen a couple of videos that of people who do things better than I were showing that it is possible, but I got a little bit of a late start. Most people start the cuttings in June. This is now September 3rd. So I might be a little bit on the the late side on it but we'll see what happens and there's only two here so if it doesn't work it doesn't work and then they have a couple of blueberry plants I took some fresh growth off of the two blueberry plants they have and rooted them they're kind of on the small side but again if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen so I did not use rooting hormone I remembered that I actually did have rooting hormone a little too late I could always just kind of dig them up put the rooting compound on but you know we'll just see what happens so 
What I've got them in is just Pro Mix that I use for, it's basically the, I think, uh, peat moss and vermiculite, perlite, that kind of thing. And then this is the kind that has the uh, mycorrhizae in it. So we'll see if that is a good thing or not for rootings. Um, so I've got them. Soil's dampened. They're just kind of sitting here so I can wet them down again a little bit. And then I'm going to put them in the garage here under a window so they'll get a little bit of northern sun but not too much. And I'll just watch and see what happens if I have to. You know, I'll put them out in a protected area outside until it gets cold. Just kind of depends. I've tried. I've tried this before and it's not been successful. So let me go grab something else to cut up and I'll show you what I've been doing. Okay, so I'm going to do the next set of grape cuttings. This is Reliance, which is a seedless red, I want to say. Dun, dun, dun. So big long thing, about four feet long. So I'm going to cut it into pieces, but first I'm going to fill up my pots. Let's see if one's already there. My trusty. Trusty little pot here. I'm just going to write on it. Hope that the writing stays. Otherwise, I'll grab some plant labels. So this is Grape Reliance 9322. 23, I wish. So just right down the side. If you kind of get it up underneath the lip of, of the pot, sometimes it doesn't wash off. I have yet to use just a supposedly waterproof Sharpie and have it stay when their plants are outside. So anything I can do to keep them out of the path, the path of the winds and the rains and stuff like that. A lot of holes in the bottom of the pot. I'm not going to put anything in there to obstruct it because I want the soil to stay moist, but I don't want it to be like sopping wet after I do my initial watering in I'm gonna just kind of keep an eye on it go out stick my finger into the soil up to like the first or second knuckle and if it's damp leave it alone if it's dry I'll give it a little water okay so I just I have my soil in my little wheelbarrow over here behind me the pro mix, what I did was I took the garden hose, wetted it down, mixed it up real good so that it's moist, not dry, but it doesn't hold together. It's 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 pretty you know loose. I'm not gonna pack it down quite yet. I'm gonna wait until I have my cuttings going and then we'll go from there. Alright. So the next thing we need to get rid of a lot of these leaves. And I need sharper. Now you could also do this technique in the spring before the vines have leafed out. That's good too. You want them to be kind of butted out, but not so you're seeing lots of green leaves. Like I said, I don't know if this is going to work. We'll see, but so far, well, I can't say the grapes have kind of worked. Um, most of my, I'm not going to worry about that. The little loose edge here, I'm going to cut it off right here. All right, let's so push the leaves out of the way. So what have I got? So I cut it off yesterday. So I want to cut it off a little bit closer to this little node right here. So I'm going to do half an inch or so. And then generally what I'll do is I'll cut in between nodes. I'd want to have like three, at least three nodes on a thing. Three. All right. Well, I like short things. So let's, yeah, let's do it this way. This one 
and we'll do oh decisions all right well i wish i had more nodes on here now i'm in a quandary all right so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut this in half and then i'm going to kind of cut on an angle Boy, these things need to be sharpened. All right. Yeah, I think that one's okay. Get you out of there. Move, move, move. All right. And again, oh, rooting hormone. Okay. So, found my rooting powder. This is a fairly full jar. You can get so many different fancy kinds of rooting powder. Um, I just, I think I got this at Lowe's or Walmart or something like that. So since it is a fairly new, but I've seen people that there are different kinds of rooting power that you use for different kinds of plants and different kinds of, whether you're doing hardwood, softwood, that kind of stuff. I don't think it says on here. So hopefully it's just an all purpose kind of deal. It's uh, indole 3 butyric acid. Okay, whatever that is. And I should know that, but chemistry was never my favorite class in college. All right, so usually I have a little baby food jar that I will pour it into. You don't want to go rooting it in because you don't you carry dirt in. Just kind of poke it through. And you want to make sure that your cuttings are going the right way. Oh, damn. Did I do it? Did I do it? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> All right. So when you look at your thing, you'll see a little in between each node, there's a little lump and the new growth starts off to the next one, so you can kind of sort of see it gradually smaller kind of deal. And if I put them in backwards, it wouldn't be the first time. But I'm busy talking to y'all, so. And then... This. This. Yes. I have not had enough coffee today. And just kind of roll it around, get it into the end. Some people will cut the, the pieces at a slant to give it more surface area. Now you don't want to push it all the way to the bottom. So if you do like I just did and accidentally shove it too far, just kind of pull it up, firm the soil kind of underneath it gingerly with your fingers and get it out of the way. All right, so we're gonna get rid of these leaves. Unfortunately, I am not making stuffed grape leaves today. Plus these are kind of dirty anyway. All right. So let's get our leaves off again. Evidently time for stronger reading glasses. And let's stop there. All right, get you out of the way. Get the leaves out of the way. And if you're wondering, I have a bucket under here to put it, take to the compost bin when I'm done. All right. So, again, making sure you're holding it the right way. And we're going to count nodes this time and see how we're going to do this. Let's see. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Of course. 
So let's cut off this one at the bottom. All right, so I guess we're gonna do three, two, and three like we did last time. Probably could keep that on there, but not gonna do our little rooting hormone. Just make sure it's on that freshly cut end. If you need to, you can always dip the cutting in water first. And then when you push it in, there's a lot of controversy about whether you poke holes in the soil before you poke it through. And I kind of go along with the whole Hello pretty turquoise pickup truck going by my house. You can leave it here if you want. Get you off. And if I really wanted to be concerned really wanted to be concerned about noisy cars on this road today. I live sitting back a ways from the road so you'd think it would be a little quieter but I seem to be in the acoustic spot. Okay. So we ended up with six cuttings. I press it down. Do it lightly at first and then get a little bit more aggressive, but you don't want to be too shovey. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna set that aside and go get something else to do. Okay, so the next plan I have, let me grab. So you may be looking at my pots and going, yeah, this isn't lavender, what are you doing? So every time, anytime I go to Lowe's or a nursery or anything like that and I get something, or my next door neighbor, I think he had bought some pots and things like that because he was gonna get into doing a nursery business and things like that. And then he thought better of it and he brought a bunch over. I've been using them for a few years now. But yeah, don't, don't throw away any of these pots that you get at Lowe's or nursery center or something like that. Um, even if it says lavender on it, you don't have to plant lavender. I have before, because I do plant, do lavender too sometimes. Um, this is a two and a half quart container. So, pretty easy. And all you have to do is disregard and realize that what you've got in the pot is not lavender and you won't get confused. All right, and get some soil in here. All right, so the next one, I thought possibly, because I have um, a pair, a dwarf, dwarf or semi-dwarf, pair rootstock that I had gotten. I had done a, um, if you are interested in fruit tree grafting, which basically you can take cuttings from somebody else's tree and graft it onto, um, you know, nursery grown rootstocks and things like that that are bred specifically for disease control or ultimate size of the tree and things like that. Um, I have taken twice now uh, fruit tree grafting classes with the extension, my county extension uh, service. I did one in 2019. Hello, hummingbird. I don't have anything for you, I'm sorry. Cheeky little bugger. Uh, he's probably telling me to fill up the, the feeder. 
He wants to get the heck out of Dodge and get back down to Central America. Where was it? Okay, so the Grafton class. I took one in 2019. They're usually held like February, March, and you pay a certain amount to buy the actual rootstocks they have to send away for the different rootstocks. And depending on your extension service, uh, one of them was just apple trees um, because the guy doing the demonstration had uh, scions, which are basically the parts that you take from the when you trim the trees, prune the trees in the early late spring or early winter. No, late winter, early spring. Okay. Uh, when you're doing your pruning for the year to open up and get rid of you know branches that shouldn't be there, and um, they'll frequently send up. Um, Oh, that's the term now, not water sprouts. Anyway, those cuttings that can, you can take from the tree, which is basically new growth that is new that year, you can graft onto your rootstocks and create trees. And I don't know if you can see out there. I can't see. But I've got a little grouping of fruit trees, some of which have uh, successful cuttings that have grafted on there and some of them that still need some grafting so I have one pear tree graft or rootstock left that I was going to take one of these cuttings and graft on but then I remembered you know mom and dad's prayer tree will still be there next winter I can just get a, a regular one and do it the, in a way that I possibly have a better chance of making it work so I'm just going to do it I'm going to try and do rootings of this is a kefir pear it's self-fertile the tree over at my parents house got woefully neglected and instead of keeping it nice and trimmed it it's grown it's like 30 feet high and unfortunately they have at least one bear over there and they have several times looked out the window to see the bear standing up on its hind legs pulling pears off of the tree that you know so any fruit that is within reach has now gone because of the bear and possibly some raccoons and you can see nice lovely little pears at the very top of the tree but none of us has a cherry picker or a extra long ladder or anything like that and I really don't want my you know senior citizen parents climbing up tall ladders trying to get pears. So I just took a few cuttings of this to see if I can get these to root and if I can I will try to take it back over and plant it and keep it under control and just leave that one to feed the animals. Alright so we're going to do about the same thing take off most of the leaves Hello, little birds. I know the bird feeders are empty. I have to go to the store and get more. You eat too much. <sighs> okay. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do with this guy is I'm not gonna try and take different segments. I'm just going to make a fresh cut here. I don't, don't want it to be too tall. All right, command decision. We're gonna cut it here. And we'll cut it here, dip it in rooting hormone, and put you in there. So there's three or four. So every one of these little nodes here has the potential of sprouting roots. And what you want to do is you want to uh, let's just cut these off so there's not as much of it drying out. Rooting hormone. Okay. 
in there. So the hope is, and I mean, I know it's not the, the regular way of producing more pear trees, but who says? The only thing is, is that most fruit trees these days um, are grown on some kind of root of root stocks to keep them from, you know, keep them going a, a certain size, that kind of thing. Okay, and we will, come here baby. I have no idea how much of this is making it to the video, but you can listen to the dulcet tones of my voice here. Okay, so same deal. Let's go ahead and do this. All I want for Christmas next year is new thingies. All right, get you and you and oh, wind's picking up. Are we going to have some more rain? Okay. You are supposed to spread it out. You can see that the end of it is is pretty green still. So it hasn't totally shut down for the summer which is a good thing all right so now we have five little kefir pear seedlings i hear you up there kitty my cat enjoys i'm in my garage above ground basement right now in the doorway and my cat likes to keep me company by laying on top of the garage door. All right, so there's pears. Oh yeah, I gotta press these down. Duh. Get them firmed in here. You want it kind of loose when you're putting the, the cuttings in, but then you want to firm the soil around them so that they have contact with the soil and then moisture. If you get an air pocket in there, the little cut ends will dry out too fast. And I've seen people put a little more dirt in here. Soil, not dirt. Okay. So I'll go water these guys in, water the others to get them fully saturated. And then we will, I'll continue on. So by now you're probably a little sick of me yammering. So we will stop this demo and then I'll show you at the end what I've come up with. Okay, so I just got finished with all of my cuttings. Got the last of them out here. There's the other grape, the Reliance grape. I took cuttings them right there. Uh, plum. Crab apple, another plum, the kefir pear. And so basically I just have it out here on the, the driveway. Um, and I'll bring a you know, I'll do a a pot, bring it out here and water it and water all the rest of them that are still out here. The goal is to get the potting soil saturated. So you don't want it to be like drowning the soil up on so Remember these plants no longer are attached to any kind of root system. So 
So everything that they're gonna get, this is just the the bear, you know, the peat moss and the vermiculite, the perlite, and a little mycorrhizae to kind of give it a little bit of welcome. So I'll do that for a little while. Let it sit there and soak in. And then when I'm happy, I take it inside the garage. I have a uh, uh, cooking sheet with a rim on it that I'll put them all in. And again, I just come down. They're not really in light. I don't have them under grow lights or anything like that. Right now, I just want them to chillax, settle into their pots. Hopefully start putting out some roots. So I think basically what I'm going to do, again, this is like the 3rd of September. And I've got roughly, you know, depending on how early winter gets here, you know, I could have anywhere from six weeks to, you know, maybe ten weeks, depending on how much, how quickly the, the winter sets in. Here in East Tennessee, even Northeast Tennessee, um, we're not really in the mountains or anything like that. We're kind of in the, the valley in between the Appalachian Mountains and Clinch Mountain, or I guess the Smoky Mountains and Clinch Mountain. Two different ranges of the same thing. And, uh, so we've, I mean, I've lived here long enough. We've had temperatures in the 70s in January and February. And we've had snow in early October. Um, we haven't had, well, we had one good snow 2020, I believe. It snowed on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day got about, uh, depending on where you were, 8 to 12 inches of snow. You know, people actually in the mountains got more, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, I wasn't able to go over to my parents' house for Christmas because it was too snowy. And Lola is front-wheel drive, but she's not four-wheel drive. And unfortunately, roads don't get maintained on Christmas Day for obvious reasons. But, uh, so, but by the next day, it was melting. So we have had, I can count on the fingers of one hand, you know, winters here in Tennessee where it got cold and just stayed cold all the way through until spring. Just doesn't do that. It kind of, the temperatures go up and down. You know, I can, I can look out the window one morning and my bees are out running around trying to see if there's any flowers out yet. And of course there's not. Uh, we won't get too much into bees since this is a thing about plants, but bees further up north kind of have a better go of it, even though they have to deal with cooler temperatures for longer periods of time. You know, bees, as long as it stays cold, they're going to stay in their, their little hive and they're just going to cluster up together and, and stay warm down here. Even though we don't have flowers, it gets warm enough, they go out and explore and try and find flowers and they expend energy and they go through their honey stores a lot sooner. Uh, so we'll deal with that with another subject. But anyway, so let's go ahead and saturate these guys again. I don't want to put too much. So you'll probably notice that some of these, the fruit trees, I don't know if it's going to work with the fruit trees or not. I hope it is. Some of them are green, semi-hard, greenwood kind of deals. Some of them are hardwoods. You can see I've taken, taken most of the leaves off. I basically just stripped um, the, the plums. This one, and this one were two long branches that I just cut off that had new growth on them and I just went and stripped off most of the leaves and then cut each of the the branches into sections so I've got two four six of that kind of plum 
two, five, eight of that kind of plum, three of the crab apple, five of the pear, and we got six of the reliance grapes. So everything basically, you know, the leaves, I kind of left some of the leaves on, not too much. You'll notice I cut these guys off a little bit. More than likely they are just going to drop and fall off anyway. I just didn't want it because that's a source of evaporation. So I'm going to get them situated in my garage and we'll, I'll show you how they're set up. Okay, here's my setup. So I just have, this is a, a baking sheet from a restaurant supply store that I got fairly, fairly cheaply. Don't even remember, it's been so long. Rust proof, obviously. I have used this as a drip tray just to catch water and stuff like that. It's tall enough, it'll hold a little water in for established plants, but not so much that they drown. So, what do we got here? So we've got our two plum trees right here. Plum trees. That's the key for pear. This is the crab apple. The two grapes. The two blueberries. The fig back there. And then I had previously rooted a couple of cuttings from my butterfly bush. And so far, that was done a couple of weeks ago. They look rather puny, but I don't know. We'll see. Those people that tell you that butterfly bushes are invasive, <laughs> hasn't happened to me yet. So, And I actually like them, so I wouldn't mind it. So, yep. So here's my little, my little bundle to watch. So they're kind of in one spot, um, hopefully putting them together like that. Um, it's in front of this window to the outside, which faces north, so they're not going to get bright sunshine, but there's going to be some dilute sunshine. Um, I usually leave the garage door open until that's the west side of the house that we're seeing out there. When the sun starts coming down and it's a really hot day, I'll lower the, the garage door to keep the, the bright sunshine out because it makes it really hot in here. But, uh, so we'll see how they do. I know some people will take cuttings like this and they will actually put them in like those, the clear plastic totes with the lids. And some people will put in, uh, wood chips, moisten the wood chips, nestle the, the pots in between the wood chips, to kind of sort of, I guess, insulate them. And then put the top on to have a little bit of a humid humidity effect. Um, I have taken where's my rusty trusty? It's totally not a totally not an ad for Coca-Cola, but I take the Coke bottles that I occasionally buy, and I'll cut off the bottom part, and you can either leave the cap on for more humidity or leave the cap off so that some airflow will get in there and then you can nestle it down over individual cuttings but you can do kind of like that I've tried it most of the time it makes it too humid and then it kind of gets mildew and they die so I don't know if I just have a really humid area and I don't need humidity domes. We'll see how doing it this way. It's out of the bright sunshine. I'll keep track of how moist their soil gets. If need be, I can take them inside. But right now it's in the 80s during the day. I don't think it gets quite that hot in here, especially if I put the garage door down. And I have the the window cracked just a little bit for some airflow if I do have the garage door down. Um, so cross your fingers and we'll report back 
if we have success or failure. So this is going to be an ongoing thing, so we'll see what happens. Bye.